the trend, the lifestyle, the history. Long before the man bun's assertion into popularity, the man bun was viewed as an honorable hairstyle. It can be traced back as far as the early 6th through 7th centuries BCE. The man and divine, known as Buddha, is depicted with a man bun-like feature on top of his head. During the Buddha's time, the Buddha was from India, and he, he was a member of the Shakya clan, which was a, a royal family. Uh, he wore a top knot as well. And when he decided that he was going to give up the, the groovy life, he had all the women he could, could ever want, he had all the pleasures he could ever want, all the treasures. His father tried to keep him from becoming a holy man. But in spite of all of that, he left. When he left home and went on a six-year journey of seeking the answer to why people suffer, the first thing he did was cut off his top knot because only royalty were allowed to wear it and when you cut it off it was a symbol of renouncing your relationship with the rest of the family and giving up your royal heritage altogether. There's a lot of pictures of the Buddha with what's called a uh, unishia on the top of his head which is a different thing than the top knot. Um, you've seen like in that picture up there, you see that sort of mound on the top of his head. And no one knows exactly where that came from other than it was considered a, a, a man who achieved a higher level of consciousness somehow had this lump on the top of their head, but there's really no factual basis for it. After Buddha, the man bun became a warrior's hairstyle. The man bun was typically worn by generals and samurai. This is traced back to the 3rd century BCE, after the discovery of the terracotta warriors. Many can be seen wearing man buns while standing to protect their master in the afterlife. The popularity of man bun was contained to Asia. That is, until 1789, when Maximilian Franco Marie Isidore de Robespierre popularized the Lolo ponytail in France. He was also an important figure during the French Revolution. Robespierre had opened the gateway for the man bun in Europe. Back in Asia, Prince Okundaria of Japan was photographed in 1825, sporting a quality man bun upon the crown of his head. Suits him. As the man bun in Europe had time to evolve and the 60s were over, the world was blessed in the 1970s with George Harrison and his man bun. The Beatles. This rock and roll group has taken over as the kingpins of musical appreciation. There are rumors around that this is Britain's revenge for the Boston Tea Party. George spread the man bun fad to all corners of the world during the long-haired hippie culture of the late 60s. George Harrison and the other three members of the band went in 1967 to study with uh, the Maharishi, Mahashogi in India. So, and they were really the first ones of a lot of people that started uh, going to the Maharishi for training in transcendental meditation. But Ringo Starr and his wife were the first ones to leave. They left within three weeks of getting there. And then, uh, then Paul McCartney, he didn't quite get into it, but John and George spent a lot more time, and George was the last one to leave India. So for George, I think, I don't know this, I think it was the Hindu tradition of growing your hair and, and putting it on the top of your head to signify the growth towards consciousness. And the Hindus believe that the top of the head is very sacred. Of course, it's the, the last of the chakras. It's, an, it's symbolic of enlightenment, and it's symbolic of a higher culture. Inspired by the Samurai, the American Night Show, Saturday Night Live, from 1975 through 1979, created the character Samurai Futaba, played by John Belushi, which featured the classic Samurai Man Bun. I think you could break a 20. In 1998, the Disney cartoon Mulan, Li Shang, the commander of the Chinese army, sports a hot man bun. This film also gets the hairspiration from Han Dynasty Chinese soldiers. In 2003, the man bun had fully evolved in Europe, thanks to British soccer star David Beckham. 
He gave the man bun recognition, but the trend had yet to catch on like wildfire. Do you think man buns are attractive? No. <laughs> Would you date somebody who has a man bun? If it's David Beckham, yes. <laughs> In 2011, American football player Tom Brady pulled his locks into a pretty weak man bun, but the American public caught on. The man bun lifestyle was beginning. In 2012, Chris Hemsworth brought the man bun into full swing, pulling his golden Thor locks into a man bun. Many celebrities caught on to the trend. Actor Jake Gyllenhaal, Jared Leto, new Oscar winner Leonardo DiCaprio, and boy band sensation Harry Styles. The, the people in Hollywood that when you, when you Google man buns and you come up with uh, Jake Gyllenhaal and uh, Orlando Bloom and you know, these are uh, Brad Pitt did it for a while. Tom Harry Cruise Styles cut his Harry, today. Harry Styles, right. The, the, you know, they're, they're perfectly good male role models, right? And that there's, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. The peak of the trend arrived on Groupon.com, November 9th, 2015. The Clip-On Man Bun. The Clip-On was for those men who desperately wanted to be part of the man bun trend, but couldn't grow out their hair fast enough. Would you date somebody who has a Clip-On Man Bun? Definitely not. Oh, okay, yeah, <laughs> no, what did you say? How do you have a Clip-On Man Bun? Hey Kyle! No, I, yeah, I would not. That does not work. That's no. weird. I like it. I don't like it at all. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's funny. That's human. No, I don't think they're clip on men's own shoes. They actually are. They are. Then, then. <laughs> I would throw the clip on men when I had them. Of course. No. That is false. That is stupid. I don't understand. Why would you fake a man bun? Then the man bun world was shaken by a news article that stated that man buns could lead to receding hairlines and balding. Receding hairlines or just losing hair is all genetic. It's hereditary, so it's not something that you can prevent from happening. It's going to happen. So pulling back of the hair, wearing a bun, is not going to prevent it from coming out. Now it might, it might actually accelerate if you're already going to lose your hair. It might, because of the constant pulling it, might, you know, kind of like when you wear a cap or you wear a hat and you lose um, circulation in that area, but it doesn't make it, it, it wouldn't, it's not going to make somebody bald, basically. It would basically be just genetics. Today, the man bun is a symbol of expressive freedom. The freedom for a man to grow out his hair like his ancestors and try to win over ladies with their locks. Um, I'm not, I'm not too into like the man bun and the beard. Oh. There's like that culture going on with like the beard and it's just too much, it's too like grungy, like, uh, you know? Be, big beard, never trimming their beard at least. I think if you're tidy, it's one thing, but if they're just gonna just, like what I see now, it's just kind of putting it up, looking grease, like a grease ball. <laughs> I just think it's totally, I get different vibes from both, you know, but I don't have bad feelings towards them, I just don't care for it. I have, I have a friend that has a man bun, has been rocking it for like five or six years, and he's awesome. But uh, you know, it, some some people are, some people that have it are goofy. But if you have my bun is a little different. It's like uh, 14 giant dreadlocks intertwined in there. So for me, it's just convenience out of the way while I work. Would you date somebody who has a man bun? Okay. Well, I'm not dumping Gary anytime soon. He's my man, but if he grew a man bun, it'd be okay. More than okay. I would be okay. Yeah, I don't like man buns like at all. So would you date somebody who had a man bun? Um. Uh, no, probably not. Yeah, no, would it happen? Probably not. Yeah, no. Yes. Would you date somebody who had a clip-on man bun? No. <laughs> if he's attractive, then yes. I think if you look attractive in a man bun, then you should have a man bun, but if someone tells you to cut your hair, then cut your hair because then you look very unattractive with the man bun on. And don't get a clip on one thinking you'll be attractive with one because you won't. <laughs> Life with a man bun seems to be centered mostly around aesthetically pleasing coffee shops and vegan friendly markets.
The other portion of the man bun population has done such for religious reasons. When I am careful with it and I put it up with care and consciousness, it has a spiritual meaning to me. It reminds me of the Lord. When I'm getting out of bed and I'm late and I comb it out and wrap it up in a ponytail and double it over, it's, it's a practical. So it has, it has a dual meaning. I, I relate to it on two different levels. Most of the time it's the practical. As this trend continues to live on, we are all left to wonder, what will the future hold for the man bun? What will the man bun come to symbolize? And will all these men be bald? Only time will tell. But until then, the man bun will continue to influence hair trends for generations to come. What does the man bun mean to you? That's life. You're not.